Here it says that there is a simple beam, a simple supported beam that has this much length, 6 meter, and is supporting such kind of a wall, okay, this HCB wall. The unit weight of the wall is given here, 17 kilonewton per meter cubed, and the thickness is given to be 20, as you can see it here in the 3D. And the height is 3.75, it's like this, and the beam has uh, a depth of uh, 50 cents and a width of uh, 20 cents. Okay, so the wall and the beam has the same width as you can see here. So uh, the question is that we should design this beam for flexure. Okay, well, let's go to the solution. Okay, so our uh, initial step will be the proper analysis of the member. Okay, so here we will determine the loads and then the bending moment and the shear force. Uh, of the beam so the total load on the beam will be the sum of the self weight of the beam and plus the weight that is imposed from or that's transferred from the wall on the beam so these two must be calculated separately and we have to finally sum them up or we have to add them together so how do we calculate the weight of the wall it is simply uh, simply the height of the wall times the thickness of the wall times the unit weight of the wall here the height times the thickness times the unit weight so this will give me 12.75 kilonewton per meter this is the weight of the wall here in addition to this we have to calculate the self weight of the beam which has the same uh, system that is the height or the depth of the beam the width or the thickness of the beam times the unit weight of the beam the unit weight since it's rc reinforced concrete we will take 25 kilonewton per meter cube so the multiplication of this will give me the product of 2.5 kilonewton per meter so the total load that is on this beam will be the self weight plus the hcb wall then we have to add them, then we will get 15.25 kN per meter. So this is the unfactored load, okay? The unfactored load. We need to calculate the design load, that is the factored load, okay? So this is the calculated load, that is 15.25. And here we need to calculate the design load, that is, since this is the dead weight, the dead load, okay? Super dead load, and this is the self weight dead load. So since all are dead loads, we need to multiply it by the dead load factor, that is 1.35 times uh, 1.35. So the designer will be 1.35 times the weight, the load that we have calculated here. So the multiplication gives me 20.59 approximately this much. With this, we have to go to the calculation of the bending moment okay then after calculation we have got that the bending moment diagram will be something like this okay maximum positive bending moment it will be 92.64 you can simply find it by w l square over 8 for the simply supported beam and the shear force will have such kind of diagram okay 61.76 and negative 61.76 because it's simply supported or you can simply calculate by w this one okay the design load times l over 2 times l over 2 okay getting this much and now this we will design the simply supported beam because the beam moment here at the bottom so the main reinforcement will be at the bottom here and the stirrups will be maximum around the supporters and it will be minimum around the mid span now let's go to the second part that is step one of the design that is the material properties we as engineers we need to decide the the grade of the concrete now the grade of the concrete here for the example is taken to be c25 by 30 it is c30 c30 here with this this is the cylindrical strength and this is the cubical strength i'm going to the table we can calculate fck to be equal to 25 or simply you can take it from this okay 25 now the design strength will be the alpha cc times fck divided by factor of safety so alpha cc is 0 0.85 as we discussed in the previous lesson and the factor of safety is uh, 1.5 so we get 14.167 megapascal and similarly for S400, that is uh, still having 400 megapascal uh, characteristic yield strength, then the design yield strength will be equal to this divided by the factor of safety and we get 347.836. Okay, now here with the materials, let's decide the diameter of the bars and here it may be you may decide the diameter of the bars 
based on uh, your previous experiences maybe with available uh, diameter of uh, with available uh, rebars on the site maybe and depending on that you may start with some diameter then later on you may modify it okay the stirrups maybe 5 8 okay so for this example we are taking this now we have to go to the geometrical part the depth is already given 500 so we need to calculate the effective depth in the effective depth effective depth is simply the distance from this compression fiber top fiber up to the center of the centroid of the reinforcement so here how do we calculate it the total depth minus this d2 this d2 is called the effective cover okay this is called this part is called the effective cover the effective cover equals the clear cover plus the diameter of the stirrup shaded in the yellow here and half of the diameter so the distance from here up to here is called the effective cover so the total distance minus the effective cover will give me the effective depth so here 500 minus the clear cover minus the diameter of the stirrups minus the main bar diameter over two this gives me 447 uh, 57 now we need to check whether the given depth is adequate so that serviceability checks may be uh, uh, eliminated or or maybe uh, left okay for the depth uh, depth uh, determination uh, depending on the deflection requirement we need to, to check the ratio so that the deflection requirement checks will be uh, jumped okay or will be left now according to the code to the euro code as well as to the ethiopian code it is given as per this table if your depth length to depth ratio satisfies these ratios it means that that deflection uh, checking is not necessary okay now for us our span is a simply supported beam here so we will go here the structural system here it says simply supported beam or one way what whatever okay here i need the simply supported beam so here i will take this one now these are two options is it highly stressed member or is it lightly stressed member now you cannot simply say take this one or this one okay however in the general procedure this column is generally provided for beams and this one is generally provided for slabs okay slabs and mat uh, elements that uh, are similar to slabs maybe staircase and so on this for beams and uh, beam types okay however your actual structure may be in between them it may be between 20 and this between lightly stressed and highly stressed okay so this is the reinforcement ratio 1.5 so if you take the worst scenario that is the 14 then you will be okay okay however you may take 18 or maybe 19 or 17 whatever depending on what you will check in the final uh, calculation when you get the reinforcement okay you may check at that time now let me start with the highly stressed one okay so i will take the ratio 14 here it says span to effective depth ratio okay this is the ratio so here the span to effective depth ratio equals 14 then by this ratio it means 6000 divided by 14 it is about 428.6 which is uh, less than the calculated one so we can say we can continue with this one just we will design for the ultimate limit state the serviceability for deflection requirement can be jumped now okay now with this data we can go now to the third part that is the rebar determination and the rebar determination we need to follow these four main steps that is determination of relative moment capacity mu then this then this then this now mu is calculated by moment divided by the design strength of the concrete times the width times the effective depth square then you get 0 0.16 now we shall go now the first step is done now let's go to the uh, design chart with the design chart i have to go to the mu mu is given here okay now with this let me go and i will uh, look for kz or kx or alpha c okay whatever you need however now for this uh, i am looking for kz here okay now with this 0 0.16 0 
I will go upward until I get this line. Okay, this line, this plot. This is KZ. Now with this KZ, I will go horizontally until I get the result somewhere here. Okay. Now with this result, I have read to be 0 0.912. Almost there. Now with this KZ is now read to be 0 0.912. Now the second step is also done. Now the third part is calculation of the area of steel. That is M divided by KZD times FYD. This KZD equals Z. Okay, Z is the distance between uh, the lever arm distance between the compression and the tension result that is in the beam. Okay. Now this equals this divided by this. Finally, I get 639.2. Now I say that I am going to use 520 bars. Now with this, I will calculate the number of the bars. Now let me go to the last step. The last step will be the number of bars, the calculated area of steel divided by single bar uh, area. Now this divided by this gives me 2.03. So always either here you have to revise the diameter and use maybe another appropriate uh, diameter. However, I will for simplicity, for simplicity I will continue with 520, so 2.0 something means I will have to take 3. Because if I take 2, I will get area of steel less than the required one. So I will take the upper limit, that is 3, okay? So provide 3 pieces of 520 bars. Now the fourth, is, the fourth step is also completed. I hope it's clear, okay? Now let me go to the final step that is step four the detailing the detailing must show the longitudinal profile as well as the section detail now the, this is my beam okay let me assume that there's a column something like this okay with maybe a dimension 300 uh, 300 millimeter and 300 millimeter now i have calculated the bottom bar that is three piece of 520 here at the bottom and there is a top bar that will be needed, just minimum reinforcement. Then now, let me uh, provide the stirrups. Stirrup will be distributed like this, okay? And maybe the stirrup spacing, you may calculate this one, okay? I have not uh, shown here the steps for the shear design because I have the example in the second example, okay? To, to deal with shear, okay? Now for this, I just calculated this. You may check this one, okay? You will get a spacing greater than 300, but I have taken this for simplicity, okay? Now the section YY is he is shown here. Here I have three bars at the bottom, maybe two minimum, 512 bars, okay? At the top. This will serve as maybe holding the stirrups as you can see it here. Now once you show this, you have to show the bar schedule, okay? The bar cutting so the bars will have such kind of dimension here such kind of dimension here and at the bottom such kind of dimension here how do i get this i have full 500 right so i have clear cover 25 millimeter and 25 millimeter then finally i have 15 millimeter with this i will uh i have provided uh 500 minus 50 so roughly roughly okay it is 450 mm so you may use this one and here okay so 3 5 20 and finally i have to add them together so that the total length will be 7150 millimeter or 7.15 meter and at the top similarly in this way in this way and i provide 2 5 12 and that same length is shown here i hope the detailing is okay okay if you actually do it okay you may get a number that's slightly less than this one okay less than this one because there will be eight millimeter here that may not be that may be uh, subtracted maybe 440 something okay so uh, just this one uh, is fine this is uh, how roughly uh, how uh, mostly these things is done now let me go to the second example that is the beam design for shear okay well uh let me go to the uh, second example that is the beam design for shear 